Today, we're going to take a look at the Moose 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro, so stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This uh, flashing gizmo that you see here before me is the Moose 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. Now they were kind enough to send me this review unit, but that isn't going to affect my review uh, in any way. So we're going to do a nice quick review on this. I'm learning to speak a little bit less and get right to the meat of the presentation. So we're going to go over, uh, this is your quick little intro. We're going to talk about some of the features and specifications of the scanner. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo here with this uh, 3D printed dragon skeleton, and then I'll talk about the pros and cons and give you my final rating. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's go over some of the features of the Moose Scanner. The front of the unit features the depth camera, a 24-bit color camera with four white LEDs for texture capture, and a blue light structured projector. The scanner is capable of achieving 0.03 millimeters accuracy and a resolution of 0.07 millimeters. One of the new features of the Moose is AI visual tracking with smart error correcting capabilities. This technology, along with the blue LED light source, results in up to 10 frames per second scanning rate. Another unique feature to the Moose scanner is the ability to scan up to 100 millimeters in depth, and the scan range is 15 millimeters to 1500 millimeters. The device utilizes a Type-C USB connection with data transmission taking place over the USB 2.0 protocol. At the time of this recording, both the Moose and the Moose Lite scanners include a 65-watt gallium nitride charger in the data and power cable. The tripod and turntable can be purchased at an additional cost. All right, so for a quick little demo here and just take a look at the software, the software that is included with the a Moose scanner and uh, most of the 3D Maker scanners is JM Studio. That's what you see here. Uh, along the left, you have some options. You also have your uh, depth meter. You've got some uh, tips along the top. Over here on the right side, you've got the uh, 3D color, or excuse me, the color camera uh, capture. So you can kind of see what that's seeing. And then you've got some adjustments here. So if I wanted to do a, we're going to take a look at the um, one of the, the first mode here, which is easy scan, and that's where I would do the scanning myself. It, and what I mean by that is I'm responsible for the motion of the scanner so that it can capture different angles of the object that I'm trying to scan. If I just want to get the geometry of the object, then I choose the geometry mode. If I wanted to capture color or texture of the object, then I would switch over to texture mode. And you'll see the scanner actually shifts over and the white LEDs start flashing so that it can capture that data as well. So once I have my depth set and I, I'm the proper distance away from my target and I have a good view of this, then I can go ahead and hit scan and it will start to collect the point cloud. And you can see that it's turning green and I can just move this back and forth and start capturing data. Um, and it will give you information as you go along. Now, I'm not going to try and do a perfect capture on this. Um, I would need to get up and move around the object uh, to get all the different angles. But once you're happy with the data that you've captured, you just hit this little frame counter at the bottom, and then it will start rebuilding the uh, data, and it will present you with the point cloud and the color data that it has captured. Once it's finished building, it will present that on screen. And then if you wanted to append, so if I wanted to get a different angle, I could hit append and I would have another, uh, you can see here it says hand scan uh, one. So it would just keep filling this up until I was happy with that. And then I could go into the processing mode. Next, we'll take a look at the table scan feature. So with table scan, the scanner is going to stay in a stationary position and you use the turntable um, to do the scanning. So the first step is, and the instructions tell you this, you want to make sure that your object that you want to scan is properly positioned so that the scanner can see it. And then we're going to remove that object and we're going to hit this initial button. And what that, that is going to do is it's going to actually scan the table going to get a few frames of that just to make sure that it has a plane that we can remove later. So once we've got a, a set number of frames, it's just kind of random, then we can put our little 
friendly dragon uh, back in here. Now, turntable scans, you kind of want to uh, make sure that you have an object that's suitable for this. Uh, if it's too oblong, you're going to have points that are very close to the camera. They'll be out of range. Um, and so circular items or something that, that doesn't have a, a ton of, uh, you know, variation are probably best. But you definitely need to play around with it and see what works best. So once you have that position in there, then you can hit scan. And at this point, you just let it do its thing. It's going to basically do one rotation or thereabouts, and it will scan as much data as it can in that rotation. Um, it can't, I don't know if it's a, a limitation of the software or the scanner or what, um, but uh, it won't do multiple rotations. It probably ends up with, you know, overlapping data at, at that point. So you will see here that once it's captured all the data that it can, um, in that uh, rotation, then it's automatically going to stop the scan. And now you can see that it's rebuilding uh, the model. And again, once it has finished rebuilding uh, the data, it will um, present to us the point cloud. And again, you have your opportunity at that point to go into the processing um, thing. Now, if this model weren't floppy, I could put it back onto the turntable and get multiple sides. You know, if it was a cube, I could flip it around or something like that and get things like that. But this guy, because every time you place it, it's gonna be in a different position, you're not gonna be able to scan something like that because there's no way to line up pieces that are constantly in motion. So that was a quick demo, but this is uh, one that I actually performed. Here I am scanning this R2-D2 unit that I've had for several years. So what you see in the final product, which probably took me a good 30, 45 minutes to do, you can see that it consisted of five hand scans that I had to align or let the software align. And then that gives me the um, 3D model that you can see there in blue. And then I can also turn on the texture that I captured uh, as well to, so you can get an idea of the, the color capability. Um, it's not a perfect scan. I could definitely do better. This is one of the, you know, the first ones that I really spent some time on, uh, but it is a very capable unit and you will be uh, pretty uh, happy with the scans that you get out of this. All right, folks. So there you have it. That is the Moose 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro. So let's get into the pros, cons, and my overall rating. So let's start with the pros. Um, first of all, it's very compact. As you can see, the technology has increased quite, quite a bit. Um, these things are getting smaller and, you know, much more usable. Obviously, I don't have to have this on the tripod, uh, so that can make it even easier uh, to position this and to do my scanning. Um, the tracking works pretty well. The uh, new AI tracking feature, it's not perfect. These, the, you know, it's a tool. You're not, or like an instrument, you're not going to be able to just pick this thing up. It's not a magic wand. You're not going to be able to just wave this thing around and get a perfect scan. It's going to take some practice. Um, you do have mobile options with this uh, unit. I did not receive any of the, uh, there is a, a, um, an optional grip that you can purchase that uh, connects to the scanner. There is mobile software for both Android and iOS, so you can make this a completely mobile unit if you want to. So that's kind of cool. Um, one of the, the great things and things that I personally look at before I purchase anything is how often are they doing software updates? Now, uh, I've received, I've already received one software update uh, for the JM Studio software since I uh, received this unit. And I'll go into that in a little bit. So um, as of 7-29-24, um, so just a couple of weeks ago, there was a new software update for the, for the, uh, um, the, the software that this unit utilizes and that gave, uh, some much needed improvements. Um, so that's great. And then as you saw, the scans are, are really good. Again, not perfect. It's going to take practice, um, but not a bad unit overall. Now let's go into the cons. One of the pros in my cons is that all my cons are really with the included uh, software, the JM Studio software. So we're gonna jump over to the computer really quick and I'll go through those three. Uh, there's three things that I think they can uh, do a little bit better with the software. Here we can see the results of our table scan. Now, as you can see, all the information in pink is what is selected. 
So it has tried to automatically select the table based on that initial scan. Now, fortunately, I can clear this selection because you can see that it selected a lot of the, uh, the skeleton as well. I can clear that selection. I can reselect here and then choose a plane. Um, my gripe is that this base thickness, so I can only go down to one millimeter. I can go up to 15, but I can only go down to one. So a scanner that has, you know, such fine resolution, I would like to be able to, you can enter a value in here, but why can't I enter 0.1 millimeter or half a millimeter or something like that? Um, because once I make this selection and then I can delete this data, um, but I don't want to delete too much of my model. The next software improvement I think could be made is this repair gaps feature. Right now it's either on or off, so it's all or nothing. Um, this is not a great scan, but suppose there was just one area that I missed um, or something, or that it was, a, it was a, you know, maybe it was an eye socket and it was intended to have a hole there and I wanted to maintain that. Well, as this feature stands, if I have this on, it's going to just try and fill every hole and make a watertight model. I don't get to choose uh, anything um, as far as how that's done. So I think that is an improvement that could be made in software. My final gripe with the software is basically just the navigation or lack of understanding of how the navigation works. It actually took me quite a while to understand how to properly uh, maneuver uh, the models once you have them scanned. So you do have some basic uh, information up here. You can open this up and it'll it gives you some um, of the commands but just trying to position a model maybe so that you can uh, place it or you know align things can be a little bit challenging you can see this this outer circle here um, that uh, encompasses the whole model well it took me a long time to realize that if i put my mouse outside of that circle then i get a different rotating ability and so you can spend a lot of time, you know, just trying to trying to line up a model or just twist it just the right way. You know, if I wanted to get this thing upright again, and you'll you'll just spend forever uh, trying to do that. And I kind of stumbled across this. So I think if they would just, you know, whether it would be a video tutorial um, or something on how this navigation system works, I think that could go a lot of way of solving some frustration that I initially experienced when I started using this software. Okay, so there you have uh, just the, a few gripes that I have. So let's get into the final rating. So overall, I'm gonna give this four out of five directed tech gears. Um, I think it's a really good scanner. Fortunately, uh, the, you know, the only reason that it's not getting a higher score is really the software, um, those minor issues that I had. Now, when I was initially, uh, look, I was almost done with my review and um, I was going to give it a lower score based on that software because my biggest gripe was actually, you saw the R2-D2 scan that I did. I took five different uh, scans and I was trying to put them together. So I started with the first one and I aligned the second one to the first one and then the third one to the second and so on. And when I got it all done, they still weren't aligned. Um, I don't know what, what had happened. Um, I spent quite a bit of time working at it but, and I was going to have to start all over again. Um, they, you know, on the 29th of, of uh, July, they sent out the new software update. I installed that and that grouping feature fixed all of that. And so now everything lined up uh, just the way it should. I didn't have to do anything different. So it's nice to see when a company is investing the time and resources into their software um, because that's going to give you a lot more features and it's going to continue to improve um, on the purchase that you've made. So I don't have any doubt that they could address the issues that I've put into this review. Um, obviously, it takes a little bit of time and money, but little things like that can always be improved in the software updates. So there you have my review on the uh, Moose 3D scanner. So I appreciate the time that you've spent with me. As always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, I would appreciate it if you'd hit that like button, hit the little bell so you know uh, are notified when I put out new content. And of course, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. So um, once again, thanks for spending time with me. And let's just keep on learning, burning, and hey, scanning together. Take care, everyone.